This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. The Life of Batar Jr. Batar Jr. is Su Yin Bei Fong and Batar's eldest son, half nephew of Lin Bei Fong, first grandson of Toph Bei Fong, and former fiance of Kuvira. As Zhao Fu's engineer, he was responsible for enacting his father's designs. However, after Earth Queen Hu Ting's murder and the Earth Kingdom's subsequent decline in stability, he left Zhao Fu together with Kuvira to reunite the nation, much to the disapproval of his mother. He was placed under house arrest for his crimes, returning to Zhao Fu while being unable to understand why Kuvira would shoot at him with her spirit energy cannon when she was captured by Team Avatar. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Batar Jr. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Engineer at Zhao Fu While Su Yin hosted a dinner for Avatar Korra and her friends, Batar Jr. and his father passed by the dining hall where the latter informed the matriarch that they would have to eat in his office, as they had a major breakthrough regarding the remodeling of a tram station. After the two left, Su Yin proudly remarked that Batar Jr. was an engineer who was responsible for handling all of his father's projects. He later attended Opal's farewell dinner and subsequently accompanied the rest of the dining group to the rooftop, where they watched Opal depart for the Northern Air Temple for airbending training. Traveling Across the Earth Kingdom After the insurrection of the Red Lotus, Batar Jr. made plans with Kuvira behind Su Yin's back to leave Zhao Fu and stabilize the nation in Ba Sing Se and the rest of the Earth Kingdom. Although his mother made it clear that if they were to leave, they would never be welcome back in Zhao Fu, Batar Jr. left anyway as he took it as an opportunity to rise from underneath his father's shadow. His departure led to a falling out with his mother, who saw it as a betrayal and who deemed Kuvira's quest an unjustified seizure of power. At some point, he entered a romantic relationship with Kuvira which progressed to the point that he proposed to her, which she accepted. Annexation of the State of Yai By 174 AG, he traveled the Earth Kingdom by train. When Bolin reported to him that two more states had agreed to join their alliance, he happily took the reports from him and relayed the message to Kuvira, stating that they had reached 90% of their goal. He was about to celebrate their achievement with Varric, Julie, and Bolin by drinking some tea, Though when Kuvira stated that she refused to celebrate until the Earth Kingdom was reunited completely, he digressed and put his cup back down. However, the contents ended up being spilled on his clothing when the train suddenly halted due to an earthen obstruction on the tracks caused by bandits. After Kuvira cleared their path, they continued on to the state of Yai, where Batar Jr. found his sister Opal. He greeted her in a friendly manner, though when asked how their mother was doing, Opal snapped at him, dismissing his question since she believed he did not care anyway. After the governor of Yai ordered Kuvira and her army to leave the state, Batar Jr. retreated with everyone else to the border of the state, where they would wait a day for the governor to reconsider. When he did, they all returned and Batar Jr. witnessed his fiancée claim the state in the name of a united Earth Kingdom. Batar Jr. arrived at Republic City together with Kuvira and the rest of the army a day before Prince Wu's coronation as the new Earth King. Upon checking into the Republic City Four Elements, Batar Jr. curtly greeted his mother. Upon being greeted as Batar Jr., in return, he haughtily corrected her by saying he just went by Batar now. He started to gloat about his and Kuvira's accomplishments, believing that his mother might feel regret about passing up on the opportunity to be part of the movement. Displeased that his mother denounced their accomplishments as something good, he merrily announced that Kuvira would be an official member of the Beifong family through a marriage with him urging his mother to get over her grudge with his fiancée. When Su Yin did not react and merely said she was glad Kuvira was stepping down after Wu's coronation, Batar Jr. briskly wondered if she preferred to be ruled by Wu, referring to him as a royal idiot. The following day, Batar Jr. attended Wu's coronation and applauded and cheered when Kuvira publicly denounced Wu's authority and claimed power for herself, renaming the Earth Kingdom the Earth Empire. When his mother later came to speak with Kuvira, Batar Jr. retreated with Bolin to the adjacent room to give the ladies some privacy. Conquering Zhao Fu En route to Zhao Fu, Batar Jr. smoothed out his uniform before joining Kuvira to look out of the window to the passing landscape, contentedly noting that by the same time the following day, his mother would have signed the treaty that surrendered Zhao Fu to their control and the Earth Empire would be entirely united. 
He was cautioned by his fiance, however, to not get ahead of himself, as securing the Metal City would not be as easy as he made it seem. Upon hearing Kuvira refer to the city as his hometown, Batar Jr. darkly denounced it as his home and declared to be ready to take it by force. However, he was once more reeled in by Kuvira, who stressed the importance of handling the situation with diplomacy, considering the eyes of the world were upon them, a task for which she wanted to use Bolin, even though Batar Jr. had his doubts in regards to the reliability of the Earthbender. When a shock rattled their train, Batar Jr. and Kuvira swiftly made their way down to the last cart where Varric was conducting his experiments on spirit vines. As the inventor shut down his project, wary of the destructive possibilities of the spirit energy, Batar Jr. wondered why the engineer suddenly cared about the consequences. After Kuvira threatened to kill Varric if he did not resume his testing, Batar Jr. left with her back to their own cart where they summoned Bolin to have a meeting with them. Batar Jr. sat relaxed on the couch while his fiancée explained Bolin's task to him. Arriving at Zaofu, Batar Jr. led Kuvira and Bolin to the room where the rest of the Beifong family was awaiting them. With a grand gesture, he swung open the double doors, though the two parties merely greeted each other with tension. When his parents tried to reason with him, stating that he belonged in the Metal City, Batar Jr. angrily asked them why, as he perceived his time there to have been spent in the shadow of his father. He stood by as Kuvira gave his family a 24-hour ultimatum to surrender the city, before returning with his fiancée to their camp. In Kuvira's personal tent, Batar Jr. told Bolin that sending off dissenters to a re-education camp was merely one of the hard truths of the army, a necessity for a united Earth Empire. Batar Jr. later escorted Avatar Korra to see Kuvira before making his way toward Varric's quarters, asking the guards in front of the door if they had seen Bolin. Learning that the lava bender had been by though was sent away, Batar Jr. grew suspicious and ordered the guards to open the door. Finding the cart to be deserted with the ceiling hatch open, the engineer deduced that Bolin and Varric had deserted, prompting him to give chase. Each piloting a mecha suit, Batar Jr. and his two corporals tracked the three deserters, who had each taken a mecha suit as well, down in the nearby forest. Catching them by surprise, Batar Jr. struck Bolin's mecha suit with an electricity bolt before charging straight for Varric. His assault was thwarted by Julie, however, which enabled Bolin to recover and tackle him to the ground. In the ensuing struggle, Batar Jr. managed to get the upper hand and delivered a strong blow to the center of Bolin's suit, knocking it on its back. Building up momentum by jumping in the air, he charged another electricity bolt and completely destroyed Bolin's suit with it. The Earthbender managed to escape, causing Batar Jr. to continue his assault with the flamethrower. He was forced to run, however, when Bolin broke his attack by launching a large boulder at him and toppled a tree in his direction. Batar Jr. managed to avoid damage and found Varric scrambling through the forest. Capturing the inventor, Batar Jr. threatened to kill him in order to force Bolin and Julie to surrender. The fugitives apprehended, Batar Jr. escorted the threesome to face Kuvira, where he stood by as Kuvira sent Bolin off to a deserter's camp, locked Varric away under military supervision to continue his spirit vine experiments, and pardoned Julie as she pledged her loyalty to the army commander. The following morning, Batar Jr. was on the train that escorted Bolin and Varric away from Zaofu on Kuvira's orders. He made his way to the prisoner holding cart to take the inventor to his new laboratory in order to continue weaponizing the spirit vine energy. As Varric reminisced about always being greeted in the morning by his assistant with a hot cup of tea, Batar Jr. dismissed the wish as something to be fulfilled when he started working. He was not amused when the eccentric inventor wanted to stall by pointing out that he usually only worked in the afternoon from 3.45 until 4 p.m. and order one of the guards to roughly manhandle Varric in order to force him to cooperate, as Batar Jr. wanted to learn how the spirit vine device worked. When Bolin woke up to the commotion, Batar Jr. ordered him to go back to sleep as they only needed Varric and added that Bolin would need his energy upon arriving at the re-education camp. He made it clear to Varric that he was expected to work as he would be supervising the work and one of the guards would assist. When Varric spooked the guards by retelling how the experiment created an uncontrollable blast of energy the last time they tried it, Batar Jr. wearily agreed that Bolin would assist. As Varric was tinkering at the machine containing the stasis capsule with a spirit vine sample in it, Batar Jr. ordered the inventor to walk him through every step of the project. He told Bolin to be quiet when the Earthbender excitedly noted to convert the weapon into a source of clean energy per Varric's original plans for the device. He continued to chastise Varric for wanting to limit his invention to clean energy, believing it was their responsibility as scientists to push the boundaries of the possible once a discovery was made. 
when Varric jabbed at him that he would not know anything about scientific discoveries as he could not even discover a wolf bat if it was building a nest in his butt, Batard Jr. called the inventor pathetic and corrected him on the fact that wolf bats did not build nests. As Varric continued to point out that Batard Jr. would never know how it felt to give birth to genius only to have it kidnapped and raised by fools, the second in command irritatingly asked if he was done with his rambling threatening to order the guards to roughly force him to continue his work. While Varric continued adjusting his invention, Batar Jr. closely studied the machine. Understanding how the current interacted with the vine and how there was a directional tube, though he failed to gasp the meaning of a device at the base of the machine, as it looked like it would direct the energy to back where it came from. Although he asked about the specifics of the piece of equipment Varric was working on near the power source, he never received an answer. He skeptically eyed the inventor as he tried to get his machine to work by tapping and kicking it. When it finally sprung to life, bathing in purple light, Batar Jr. inquired after the source of an incisive ticking that filled the wagon. Learning that it was a timer, he irritatingly asked for more details and was shocked to learn that it was for a bomb that would go off five minutes later. As Varric explained that it would destroy all his research and everyone in its vicinity, Batar Jr. grew furious and stated the inventor to be bluffing. He pointed out that he would not let Varric blow everything up as he was working for Kuvira, a job that no one was allowed to quit. Snapping his fingers, he ordered the guards to apprehend the inventor, though changed his mind when Varric revealed to have a remote with which he could set off the bomb immediately. Forced to leave Bolin and Varric on their half of the train, Batar Jr. commented that Varric was insane, only to receive the quick answer that they had known that from the moment they hired him. He kept an eye on the disconnected wagons via a telescope and was shocked to witness it explode, having been under the impression that Varric had only been bluffing. Commenting that the inventor was crazier than a sewer pipe elephant rat, he ordered the rest of his crew to set course back to Zaofu. Batar Jr. arrived at the Metal City in time to attend his fiancée's victory speech to the Metal Clan. He grew angry when he noticed that his father and eldest brother defied Kuvira's rule by refusing to bow to her. He stalked over to his family and yelled at his father to kneel before Kuvira, stating her to be his rightful leader. When they refused and his father told him that he was disappointed in him, he ordered them to be taken away, before leading the rest of the Metal Clan in a cheer to hail the Great Uniter. Afterward, Batar Jr. followed Kuvira to his family's personal garden and reported to her that he was certain that Varric and Bolin had perished in the explosion, along with the spirit vine research, though reassured his fiancée that he could replicate the technology with the help of an assistant he also received the order to begin dismantling the domes protecting Zaofu. Readying the Spirit Energy Cannon Batar Jr. traveled along with Kuvira in the air fleet toward the foggy swamp. Making his way to the banyan grove tree, he examined the surrounding roots with a probe, concluding that they were infused with spirit energy more powerful than in the samples taken from Republic City, prompting Kuvira to order her battalion of mecha suits to start harvesting the roots. Batar Jr. returned to a factory near Zaofu, where he continued to weaponize Varric's technology with the help of Julie in the form of a spirit energy cannon. Upon the weapon's completion, Batar Jr. ordered his crew to test the power core to make sure that the demonstration in Kuvira's presence the following day would run smoothly. With the energy capsule loaded, he told Julie to initiate Phase 1, though soon retracted the order when she reported that there was a problem with the condenser backing up. When the override failed to respond, Batar Jr. ordered for all the workers to evacuate, since the cannon was about to explode. Although Julie urged him to leave as well, he ignored her and manually shut the machine down by removing a part of its circuitry. Much to his shock, he found a cracked channeling ring and ordered all the workers to disassemble the entire cannon to check every part for irregularities, since it needed to be perfect by the next day. He was surprised to find Kuvira inspecting the cannon later on, as he had not been expecting her until the next day. He reported that they had encountered some malfunctions, though reassured her that they should be ready for the demonstration. The next day, Batar Jr. proudly fired up the cannon on Kuvira's order. When the machine malfunctioned again, he was shocked to find the error had been caused by a missing distributor pin. He reported to Kuvira that he had locked it in place himself the day prior, eliminating the possibility of it having fallen out. Asked if the missing object could cause the cannon to fail, he noted that it could cause the cannon to explode. After Kuvira discovered the malfunction to have been caused by Julie's sabotaging, Batar Jr. was ordered to chain Julie to a tower located in the abandoned village that was the target of the cannon. Afterward, he set out to fix the cannon, though his work was interrupted by the blaring of the factory's alarm, 
alerting them to the escape of the Beifong family held captive underneath the facility. Asking whether he should postpone the test, he was ordered by Kuvira to continue his work and to fire when he was ready. As such, he fired the cannon later on, though when he spotted Opal in the target town, he urged Kuvira to stop the test. His plea came too late, though the weapon's trajectory was altered when his mother, twin brothers, and aunt rattled the cannon with their earthbending, causing the shot to miss. Conquering Republic City and Capture After the successful test of the Spirit Energy Cannon, Batar Jr. traveled back to Zaofu with Kuvira, where he witnessed her address the troops and announce their plans to invade the United Republic of Nations. As she finished her speech, he retreated with her out of sight, where he told her that he was honored to march into Republic City by her side and that he loved her. In turn, Kuvira thanked him for all his support, noting that she could never have achieved her goals without his help and looked forward to marrying him after they claimed victory over Republic City before sharing an embrace. Realizing that Julie, who knew about their plans, had warned the United Republic, they launched their attack a week ahead of schedule in order to keep the element of surprise. Only a few hours away from Republic City, they were discovered by Team Avatar, though Batar Jr., traveling per airship, was told by Kuvira to let the team flee back to Republic City, confident that even without the element of surprise, no one could stop them. Arriving at Republic City, Batar Jr. proudly noted that they had completed their goals, after Kuvira forced President Raiko to surrender the city by sinking the United Forces battleship in a matter of seconds and set course to Air Temple Island in order to present the President with the terms of the Earth Empire. Before he could reach his destination, however, Batar Jr. was overpowered by Tenzin, Bumi, and Korra, who kidnapped him and took him to a Future Industries factory. When Korra entered the Avatar state and lifted him in the air to force him to reveal how they could stop the enormous mecha suit he had built, Batar Jr. smugly called her bluff and was put down again. Laughing and sarcastically asking her if that was truly her best idea, he noted that they had lost the battle even though they refused to accept it. When his mother walked up to him, Batar Jr. instantly dismissed her and reaffirmed his belief that they were only doing what was right, even if that meant having to take the lives of those who refused to surrender. He refused to come back home with her and coldly declared Kuvira to be his new family. Batar Jr. relented, however, when Korra threatened to make it her life's mission to keep him and Kuvira apart, and he agreed to contact his fiancée to try and convince her to cease her conquest of the United Republic. Calling Kuvira, Batar Jr. told her that he refused to live his life separated from her and urged her to stop her advance so that they could return home and get married, a statement Kuvira agreed with, and she told him she loved him. After being released from his bonds, Batar Jr. was shocked to learn that Kuvira was aiming the spirit energy cannon at them and fired. Although he managed to survive the explosion, Batar Jr. was rendered unconscious and was carried out from underneath the rubble by his mother and Bumi. He was taken to Asami's office with the rest of the injured, where his mother laid him down on a camp bed. As he regained consciousness and noticed his mother by his side, he apologized for betraying her and the rest of their family. He was heartbroken as he did not understand how Kuvira could deliberately aim the spirit energy cannon at him after he had given his life to her. Sitting up, Batar Jr. also lamented about how his siblings would never forgive him. However, Su Yin comforted him by acknowledging that while it would probably take some time, they would work through it together as a family. Batar Jr. later joined Team Avatar and their allies in Asami's workplace and revealed that the enormous mecha suit was powered by spirit vine energy and thus impervious to electromagnetic pulse attacks. When they later planned to saw a hole through the platinum armor of the suit with plasma saws attached to hummingbird mecha suits, Batar Jr. told Korra that the suit could be powered down from inside the engine room by switching the two emergency levers off at the same time. After Kuvira's surrender, Batar Jr. was sentenced to house arrest, confined to his mother's estate in Zaofu. Reunion with Kuvira When his family returned from Gaoling along with Kuvira, Batar Jr. was quick to approach his ex-fiancée, telling her that he thought she would never have the courage to return home. Kuvira responded that she thought she would never see him again, and he retorted that she would not have if Korra and her friends had not saved him. She tried to apologize, telling him that she felt terrible, but reminding him of the position they were in and supposed that he would have done the same. Batar Jr. interrupted her, saying he would never have tried to kill her with a blast of spirit energy as he loved her. He noted that his mother had told him that Kuvira was trying to change, but believed her to be exactly the same entering his room and slamming the door behind him in spite of her protests. Shortly after, Korra knocked on his door, telling him that she understood why he did not want to help Kuvira, but hoping that he would still help her, as the future of the entire Earth Kingdom depended on it. 
Batar Jr. opened his door and invited the Avatar inside. He told her that he was willing to temporarily put his anger toward Kuvira aside for the greater good, and confessed that he still felt guilty for everything he did when he was part of the Earth Empire. Batar Jr. joined the rest of his family sharing a meal with Korra and Kuvira as his grandmother noted how Guan's victory was almost certain. He noted that if he could restore Asami's mind, then he could use the knowledge to free the brainwashed citizens. Kuvira and Suyin added that Guan would lose all support once they realized what he did to them, leading to Toph's victory. Kuvira told her ex-fiancé that she appreciated his agreeing to help, and he curtly told her to get started. By evening, Batar Jr. had constructed a brainwashing device, which Kuvira complimented him on, noting that it looked almost exactly like the device in Shang's lab. Batar Jr. noted that he was familiar with Shang's thought process, having worked closely with her, but thanked Kuvira on her thorough descriptions of the setup, noting that Kuvira always had an excellent memory. He stated that the hard part would be figuring out the settings Shang used and decided to begin with low-intensity electromagnetic pulses. Kuvira read out Shang's statements in reverse into the night, but to no avail, Asami affirming her loyalty to Guan despite multiple different settings being used. With Batar Jr. unsure why none of the results worked, Kuvira suggested starting with someone who had not been brainwashed, which he considered as a strong possibility. Korra immediately offered to be the test subject in order to help Asami, but Batar Jr. was uncertain, noting that it could cause memory loss and he would not want to be responsible for the Avatar's mind being scrambled. Kuvira then offered herself as the test subject, and despite Su Yin's objections, she resolved that Guan and the remnants of the Earth Empire were her messes to clean up. Kuvira was attached to the brainwashing technology, causing her to relive a childhood argument with Opal. When she was finished, Batar Jr. confirmed that he now had what he needed. The next time they attempted the process, the brainwashing was undone, though Asami remembered nothing about what she did while brainwashed. Shortly after, Opal, Wei, and Wing rushed in the room, asking Su Yin to turn on the radio as Guan had just won the election. Korra proceeded to telephone Zhu Li, and the president ordered Kuvira to be brought back to Republic City, having proven herself far more a hindrance than a help. After Korra told Kuvira about the plan to leave first thing in the morning, she approached Batar and raised that he would be getting his wish to never see her again. Her ex-fiancé wished her a safe trip back, and she told him that it broke her heart when she chose the Earth Empire over him, realizing that she could never repair their relationship, but telling him that she truly loved him in return. Batar Jr. told her it had been nice working with her, and departed. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.